So this question is a word problem. So I'm going to use a translate word problem strategy. So this question says, in 2005, 10 phlox plants were planted in a garden. So my strategy tells me to write down the quantitative information as I read it. So 2005 goes along with 10 plants. The next sentence says, the number of phlox plants increased by 140% each year. Okay. So I know I'm going to add 140% per year. And I'd rather just actually figure out, well, what does that mean, right, for the next year? What does that mean for 2006? So for 2006, that would mean I'd have the 10 plants from the previous year. But I'm adding to that, right, 140% of that number, which just means I'm multiplying that 10 by 1.4. And that will give me... Right, 14 here plus 10, that will give me 24 plants. Now, because of my experience with questions like this, I'm going to also just go one more layer, and I'll tell you why in a second, and just go to 2007. So 2007, right, I'm starting off with 24 plants from the previous year, but then I'm adding to that 24 times 1.4, right, 140%. Now, I don't know how to do that math mentally, but I can just go over here to the side or up here and say, well, what is 24 times 1.4? 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 2 is 2. We have 6, 3, and oops, forgot to carry my 1 there, and 3 and a decimal. So this ends up being 33.6. But then, of course, I'm still adding that to the 24 that I already had. So I have 57.6. So in the year 2007, I have 57.6 plants. Okay. So that should be enough of, of a kind of a, a runway there in terms of time. Let's keep reading. Which of the following equations best models the estimated number of plants, P, in the garden T years after 2005? So here's why some experience helped me with at least going a couple years beyond 2005. It's because I can take this information and then I can say for 2006, what I know is that when t equals one, p equals 24. And I can use this to plug into my equations to figure out which one's correct. For 2007, I can say, well, when t equals two, p equals 57.6, right? And I can use this to plug in to my equations to figure out which one's correct. Now, it's obvious that plugging in t equals 1 is easier than plugging in t equals 2 um, for some of these, right? Especially without having a calculator. So I'm going to use this first box here, or the first data set, first data point, to see if I can find my answer or at least narrow my answer down. So when I plug in t equals 1, I see that a is incorrect, right? P does not equal 24 if T is 1. If I replace that T with 1, P does not equal 24 in that case. For B, if I replace T with 1, P does equal 24, right? 2.4 times 10 is 24. For C, when I replace T with 1, P does not equal 24. And for D, it does, right? So I have two answers. And again, this is where experience helps because this is very typical when you use the plug-in option or plug-in strategy, which is why up front I already figured out what happens when t equals 2. So what I'm going to do is now erase this from b and d. I know that c and a are gone, right? They cannot re-enter. But when I replace t with 2, the question is, Does this? do I get a p-value of 57.6? So 10 squared is 100. 100 times 2.4 does not equal 57.6. Therefore, choice D must be the correct answer.